Welcome to DC lesson number two, exercise tutorials. So how does this video operate? Four basic steps. Step one, an exercise question is posed. Student pauses the video and attempts the question. Step two, continue to play the video. A hint is provided. A little, a little bit of assistance is required. Again, then pause the video, complete the exercise. Step three, continue to play the video. The answer is provided with a worked explanation. And step four, continue the video to the next question. So let's get underway. Question one, a photovoltaic cell produces energy when exposed to what? Heat, light, force, or pressure. So pause video here and select your answer. Continuing on, the hint is the answer is in the name of the cell. Now the answer, the answer is photovoltaic. So as the hint said, photo means light. Therefore, the only correct answer was the one that had to do with light. Um, you might have got tripped up, but photovoltaic cells have nothing to do with heat, nor force, nor pressure. Question two. What effect is used to create an EMF in a microphone, or what we might call a condenser microphone? A, force, B, heat, C, piezo, D, chemical. Now for the hint, sound waves are striking what? So in a microphone, we're using sound waves. What do they strike to? give us an electrical signal. The answer is, it's piezocrystal. So again, if we have a piezo quartz crystal, and we fix one side of it, it's going to give us a nice little millivolt output as sound waves actually strike the other side. Question three, what is used in a furnace to detect temperature? So our hint, hint is in the name of the sensor. And on to the answer. The answer is A, a thermocouple. So thermo has to do with temperature. So direct connection here with temperature. There is a resistor that will measure temperature. There are thermo resistors, but the more typical way is to use a thermocouple. So that was a possibility, but not a strong possibility. Clearly not a battery clearly not a piezo crystal. Question four, chemical reactions can be reversed in what kind of cell? A primary, B carbon, C wet, D secondary. So our hint, this type of cell is rechargeable. So our answer is a secondary cell. A secondary cell is the only one that the chemical reaction can be uh, reversed in. So primary cell is um, single use, single charge only. Even though carbon is involved in a cell, it has nothing to do with whether it's reversible or not. And you can have wet cells that are primary and secondary. So again, wet didn't really tell you much, so it had to be secondary. Five, what are four of the most common energy sources that we use for 
generating electricity and energy. A hint, one of these sources is coal. So here's a list of the possibilities. We could have had solar, fossil fuels, which involves coal, oil, gas, nuclear, water as in hydro, wind or geothermal. So any combination of those, if you've got four of those, you've done well. Question six, list four devices used to convert energy into mechanical power. So any form of energy being converted into mechanical type power. See if you can list four of those. So pause here. Now for your answer, oh sorry, your hint I should say. So we're looking for prime movers. One is a petrol engine for example. So pause here again. So here's a list of all the possibilities. We could have had steam turbine, gas turbine, water turbine, jet engine, petrol engine, diesel engine, nuclear reactor, boiler, solar panels, wind turbine. So if you've got any, any of those, any four of those, again, you've done well. Seven, question seven. The more practical unit of electrical energy is A, the kilojoule second, the kilowatt second, the kilowatt hour, or the kilojoule hour. By the way, they are all electrical energy units, but one's more practical than all the others. Hint, how is electrical energy power billed? So when you get your bill at home, how is, what energy unit do they use to give you your bill. The answer is kilowatt hours. So thousands of watts per hour is the most useful. If you were use kilowatt seconds, the number would be huge. And if it was kilojoule seconds, we'd have to find some way of converting kilojoules to kilowatts, so on and so forth. So kilowatt hour is the most practical. Question eight, the power losses in a system may be determined from the relationship, the following relationship, losses equal. So the power losses in a system may be determined from what relationship losses equal? A, output divided by input, input divided by output, input subtract output or output subtract input. Here's the hint, this is the losses, not the efficiency. So we're thinking about losses, not efficiency. And the answer is C, the losses are the input minus the output gives you the losses. So whatever you put into a system, for example, so let's just do a quick little Example, let's say we, we input 10 kilowatts and we output 8 kilowatts, uh, the losses are going to be 10, I get my thing to look like a 10, there we go, 10 minus 8 equals, we have 2 kilowatts of losses. Nine, if the power output of a motor is eight kilowatts and its input is 10 kilowatts, then the efficiency percent is. So what's our efficiency percent? 
So pause here while you think about what formula you need. Here's our hint. Energy, energy efficiency equals, it's in percent, output divided by input multiplied by 100. So that's in this particular case, 80%. So again, our output is eight. So eight kilowatts divided by 10 times 100. 8 divided by 10 is 0.8, multiplied by 100 is 80%. Question 10, a 750 watt electric radiator is connected to a 240 volt supply for six hours. Calculate the cost of running the heater if the cost per kilowatt hour is nine cents. Here's the hint, the voltage is irrelevant. The answer lies in the units in kilowatts hours, kilowatt hours. So here's how we do the calc. So here's your answer. The amount of time is power multiplied by time and divided by a thousand. So the power multiplied by the time divided by a thousand. The thousand just puts it in K. That's all we're doing, converting it to thousands because our cost is in kilowatt hours. So we have 750 multiplied by six multiplied by a thousand, giving us 4.5 kilowatt hours. And we know that it costs us nine cents for each kilowatt hour. So our kilowatt hours multiplied by our nine cents, which will be 4.5 kilowatts multiplied by 0 0.09, giving us 40.5 cents. Question 11, calculate the cost of running a 2,400 watt or a 2.4 kilowatt electrical heater and 1,200 watt lamps for eight hours. The cost of electricity is 19 cents per kilowatt hour. So pause here. Here's your hint. Calculate the total power first. So you've got to know what the total all up power is first. So pause again, do your calcs. And here's the answer. So the total power is the 2.4 kilowatts or 2,400 watts plus 12 100 watt lamps, giving us a total power of 3,600 watts or 3.6 kilowatts. Remember our kilowatt hours is power multiplied by time divided by a thousand to get it into kilowatts. So in this particular time we had 3,600 running for eight hours and we're going to divide all of that by a thousand to get it into kilos, giving us 28.8 kilowatt hours.
once we had that we knew that our cost was 19 cents per kilowatt hour so it's simply 28 multiplied by 0.19 and we get a final price of it will cost five dollars and 47 cents to run that entire load for the eight hours question 12 if the efficiency of an electric motor is 80 percent and the power output is 10 kilowatts determine the input power so again pause here here's your hint transpose the energy efficiency equation so it's the energy efficiency equation but you're going to have to transpose it so moving forward here's the answer as I said it's the energy efficiency equation that's this one here energy percent to transpose it we want to make the input the subject of the formula so the way we're going to do that is we've got to multiply both sides by the input and we've got to divide both sides by the energy percent and that will give us the input is equal to the output divided by energy percent multiplied by a hundred so that's the transposition there making input the subject now it's just a matter of putting the data into the equation so we were told we had 10 kilowatts out 80 percent efficiency and our 100 for percent and we do the maths that comes out at 12.6 kilowatts So that's the end of DC Lesson 2 tutorial. I hope you enjoyed the few questions and the worked explanations at the end of each question.